On today's episode, we break down all the AFC teams, the incoming rookies. We talk winners, we talk losers, and we talk all of them. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Don't miss a moment and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Thursday, May 2nd. Mike Wright is here. And I'm, I'm Andy Holloway. And we are the same age as we have been. And somebody else is a year older than he used to be. Happy Jason. Happy birthday <laughs> to me. Happy birthday, Jason. Thanks. I uh I I work on my birthday, unlike Papa Josh. That's a great point. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, Papa Josh takes off obviously the birthday. The of day before him and all of his family members' birthdays. The day before or the day after. Yep. And he knows it's true. Uh he's <laughs> naughty. He's actively <laughs> naughty. <laughs> And uh, but you don't you don't celebrate your birthday that way. Um, no, I'm I'm not ten anymore, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't do these big. No, nope. can I stay home from school, mom? Uh, I'm oh, usually man. gonna just make sure I make it to a nice steakhouse for us. Is steak that the plan? Potatoes. Are yeah. you all booked up or? Um, yeah, I, I'm tonight, sure, tonight I'm you're sure gonna my eat wife's well. Got something planned. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, welcome in. We've got the second half of our draft recap going through the AFC. Winners and losers from the NFL draft, which is going to be very fun. I thought the NFC show went well. Oh, it was excellent. Okay. Lots of thoughts there. Glad I it threw was that out there. Tremendous. Uh, cool. You can go back cool. and listen. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do we have going on? We had a very special giveaway. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not seeing where someone hit a sound. I, need, I feel like we need a celebration. Eh, that'll work. So, giveaway winners. This was a big one. Uh, we were giving away Listener League spot and some jerseys. Congratulations to Nicholas, and good luck pronouncing this last name. Oh, How would it. you do it? Vuiz. <laughs> Nicholas. His, Nicholas Vuiz. 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 Uh, congratulations. You are in the Listener League. Our team will reach out to you. Justin Jefferson signed jersey. Kevin F., congratulations. Fleurlage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Travis Etienne jersey, Christopher M. Manilo. And a uh a, the special the special gift, a Michael. Oh, the, the the bonus. Yeah, a Michael Pinnock signed jersey, signed of course by Kyle, the Borgogan himself. I mean, that's the real prize here. The there treasure. is a, we might want to ask David who won this, David Bergstrom, if he wants Kyle to soil the jersey or not. <laughs> But uh, congratulations, and thank you to everybody who entered um, through UltimateDraftKit.com. Like, just wear it. <laughs> What's that? The jersey. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just saying whether we want his signature on it or not. I feel like when you soil something, that's a potty. Yeah. That's uh, not like I'm sweating into it. That's, that's I took a dump. I was trying to confirm it. It's like, just wear. You didn't have to really jump well, in you here. Said he's, do we, he doesn't want him to soil. Soiling the jersey can be just getting it dirty. I don't think that's true. Yes, and don't shake your head back it, there. That's it can. You two, you guys live inside of a bathroom. Yeah. So, so what? Welcome to my office. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't sit down because it's taken. It's taken. <laughs> I I didn't mean he was going to like. Anyways, um, <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers. Follow us over there. The community, the Foot Clan, thirty thousand strong at jointhefoot.com. Get access to our Discord community. A lot of different perks, extra episode every single week. I mean, if you're not happy with two episodes a week, there's a way to be happier. And honestly, the Footcast is an awesome uh, kick your feet up type of show that we do every week. It gets a lot looser. And you're like, what? This is already so loose, this show. Uh, it gets a lot looser there. And this time of year, you also get access to the Foot Clan Leagues. So these are, you know, that, that community of, of Foot Clan members that are, you know, just love the show, love fantasy football. They get in leagues together, and dynasty leagues are forming all the time right now after the NFL draft. So if you're like, man, I see all these rookie drafts going, I see all these startup drafts going, I want to get in one, 
You can go to FootClanLeagues.com and find some new friends. There you go. Join the Foot.com as a community. I think that is it up at the top. Am I forgetting anything there, Al? No, sir. All right. Uh, let's jump into some news. News and notes from around the league. Money, money, oh. Travis Kelsey got paid two year thirty four million dollar extension. He's gonna live forever. I I guess. I have had the most comedic off season for my dynasty team. Yeah, because your dynasty team is ancient. My dynasty team is so old. And yet how old is it? <laughs> and yet Mike Evans signed an extension. Travis Kelsey, extension. Tyler Lockett, extension. Mostert. Most are got an extension. It makes no sense, but I'm riding it into the ground. And no one wants to trade with me. Yeah, th I mean, this is great news for, obviously, for Travis Kelsey, for dynasty managers of Kelsey. I, I know Mike and I's champ, champ, champ team. We've got Kelsey. This is this is just nice. X. Uh, we, X we were champ, still champ, We were team. still champ, champ, champ in a row. You're yeah. not, you're, you're hashtag not the champ. Yeah, I mean, it's like a president. Once a president, yeah, always a I was, president. I was going to go Academy Award winner. They're, yeah, your presidents can't run again, right? Well, you can serve two limits, but oh, you're, okay. oh, you're still you haven't hit your limit. You're still president so and so. Look, I just am not going to let champ, champ, champ go for yeah. the entire year. We will retire without... at ten championships, so f exactly seven years from now. See, if if you stuck at the president thing, there should have been eight championships. Sure. So make up your mind, uh, Kelsey. Champ, champ, champ. Kelsey, a new deal. You like to see it. Shows his commitment. He wants to be there. They want to win it again and again, I'm sure. I mean, that's the truth is they if they win three, how does he not come back for four? Yeah, and, and I do think for fantasy purposes, Kelsey will continue to go downhill in total fantasy points on a fantasy points per game basis, not because he's even losing a step, but as he gets older, they are being more cautious with his utilization. And so he's going to be important. He's going to be a top tight end. But I don't think he will completely and utterly dominate the way that you know he did when he was the tight end one year after year after year after year after year. What you would look to if you want to be encouraged about a potential future is Tony Gonzalez because Gonzalez was the tight end four, two, and five in his year 35, 36, and 37 which is wild. Yeah, he could probably do that. Those numbers all look achievable, too. It's like 80 for 807, 93 for 930 and 8. Like, that is, that's in the cards. And I didn't realize that until this exact moment, how good he was uh, at that age. So, yeah, uh, it's good, like you said, not number one dominating, that type of thing, but he could be still valuable for Yeah, the, a, a top five tight end is pretty much a sure thing. He's still the number one target for Patrick Mahomes. We're going to love it, but... You just have to be realistic at age 34. You look at the last four years, he's gone from 86% of snaps, 82% of snaps, 80% of snaps, and this last year, 77% of snaps. So they're just, you know, they're being cautious as they should. They've won back-to-back -back championships. They're a smart team. Falcons picked up the fifth-year option for Kyle Pitts, which uh, projects to be $10.875 million. He's only 23 years old still. I think By it's the smart, way, Kelsey had zero career receptions at the age that <laughs> wow. Kyle Pitts currently is. Yeah, it is. Oh, it is. Man. That's wild. Well, Kelsey obviously wasn't drafted as a toddler like Kyle Pitts was, and then he also started his career injured. But Kyle Pitts is so he's young enough to be a rookie in this draft. There are rookies coming out that are older than him right yeah. now. Yeah. So still some hope, potential, and a future there in a new offense. Zay Jones was released by Jacksonville. Did you guys see the little surprising because he just he's had a big role in the offense. Yeah, he should he should find a team, but the the way I found the news was through the rap sheet tweet, but the phrasing was was it suspect? Yeah. Go ahead and get no, it. No, it's us. just it's thanks to their recent draft additions, the Jaguars released Zay Jones <laughs> and Joey Sly. Like <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> Why, yeah, I'm out of a job. Why are you why are you doing that to these kids? Yeah, they weren't doing that on purpose. No, they, they didn't just, know who was going to get canned. Thanks to their draft additions. Uh and free agency, right? Gabe Davis. Yeah, Gabe Davis yeah. was added. 
Michael Gallup one year deal with the Raiders where uh wide receivers generally go for their final season and <laughs> until they leave. Yeah, well he will have a uh, bad quarterback throwing the ball to him very rarely. So if you would li if that sounds good to you for fantasy. That's the recipe. Yep. Well, what, rarely targeted by a bad quarterback? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. What? I mean, that's true. What? You Gardner. You're hesitant. I don't think, Oh, I don't he feels think, like you're shooting Gardner. I don't Gardner. think Gardner's bad. Um, I think Gardner plays half the season. Aiden O'Connell plays half the season. This team loses a lot of games. So and half go the back season he has an okay quarterback. I'm, I'm just trying to stand up for Gardner. Well, it's not half, bad. Half the season, Devontae Adams, Jacoby yeah. Myers, Trey Tucker, they have a, a good quarterback. Brock Bowers. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Any other news, gentlemen? Anything you got for us? Nothing back here. Didn't we have like a mediocre signing of the week drop? Oh, that, I mean, of this is made do. for Michael Gallup one year, $3 million. <laughs> mediocre signing of the week. Man, can, now we can say congratulations, Michael Gallup. This is a big deal. You got the mediocre signing of the week on the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Uh, if, if Mike wants some propaganda, Gardner Minshew. Oh, career passing Look stats. At this. He's he's fifty nine touchdowns, twenty four picks. Trevor Lawrence is fifty eight touchdowns, thirty nine picks in one fewer game played. Yeah, I'm just saying, just throwing it out there. Who's bad now? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Gallup. Uh, yeah, that's fair. All right, let's jump in. Hi, rookie. Welcome to the NFL. All right, we are walking through all the AFC teams and the takeaways from the draft, winners and losers, uh, fantasy-relevant selections and, and how they're going to do this year or how we project them to do. So here we go. The New England Patriots selected Drake May at pick three. So they got their quarterback. They got a quarterback who is uh, very young, uh, a ton of talent, who the Vikings tried to trade up and get. And, you know, New England's an interesting situation. I I had asked the Borgogin about a research project because I, you know, which I'm sure he hasn't done yet because he just. It's also been like lazy, 24 lazy. hours. But. Uh, just kidding. But every every draft has like three or four teams that look like a destination that is Siberia or being condemned to a, a, a certain situation. And the Patriots kind of fit that mold, even though certainly they don't have the same offensive coordinator or the same head coach. Quarterback yeah. was a huge problem. It's a and, full reboot. And it's a, yeah, it's a full reboot. But Drake may brand new quarterback. They spend a second and a fourth round pick on wide receivers and Jalen Polk, who I really, I liked him on film uh, out of Washington. He was one of the targets from Michael Penix jr. You heard me right. Uh, Javon Baker, <laughs> round four. And so the reset is in order. It's a tough division. There's not a lot of clarity, I think, in how things are going to play out on the offensive side of the football. When you have a rookie, you have a scheme that's changing. Some recent news just came out talking about the Cleveland-style offense being implemented, which means some power runs which Ramondre Stevenson hasn't run a bunch of those in his career at all. Mm -hmm. And so then you bring in Antonio Gibson, and then you have a wide receiver room that is like no more occupancy because there's so many. The wide receiver room is crazy. I mean, you, you've you added these two rookie wide receivers to your rookie quarterback in hopes that you're, you're planning for the future and that these guys work out. They are met with Demario Douglas, um, who was, you know, a really good a, rookie a, season. An interesting rookie last year. And they've still got Juju Smith Schuster on the roster. They signed KJ Osborne. They've got Kendrick Bourne. It it is it is. I mean, they've got Jalen Rager and Tyquan Thornton. This this wide receiver room is like chock full of wide receiver threes. It so, really is. So that's where you're hoping that one of these two rookies emerges. It's also where you're going to probably see similar to the Cleveland Browns offense the utilization of the tight end. Hunter Henry resigned. Uh, he will probably be fantasy relevant. But it, it makes it really, really difficult to for for at least year one. I mean, at Dynasty, all these all these players matter, but it, it makes the path for relevant fantasy options here look murky because their entire draft this year was offense. Their defense was great, and they said we're gonna go hard at the offense. That's where they focused, and it I don't have a ton of confidence. Yeah, I don't have a huge amount of confidence for this year, but Andy 
uh, the the point of just be open to the idea because I I am on the side of th- it looks this looks so bad on paper. Can they really turn this around? But it is it's a brand new staff, and just leave room for one of these guys to actually be good. And I'm specifically to Dynasty where like. If, if watching where Jalen Polk is being drafted in rookie drafts is wild. When we we know we know in our hearts that not every pick works, but draft capital is a huge signal to success in the NFL. Polk was the thirty seventh overall pick, and in the in all the rookie drafts I've taken part of, I have seen fourth round selection, Mister Franklin, Jason, your guy. Hey, mm. But Franklin drafted well before Polk goes. So and they're they're usually right around the same uh, around the same spot. But you're right. You people have I been have, drafting fourth rounder over a second yeah, rounder. So it's just leave some room that Polk might be a good player. I don't I, I don't know. But well, that we're burnt a little bit uh, in both situations when you bring up Thornton. Uh, yeah, you could say the same thing. For I mean, Thornton. Yeah. Thornton was the fiftieth pick in the draft. Yeah, he was so. The you know, I think it's all going to come down, we know it, to Drake May and whether he performs. And if he does, then he's going to find his favorites. And this depth chart, we'll be paying close attention to it in the in training camp. And so they might be hard to stat right now, but it's going to become more clear what that depth chart looks like. It's not going to be eight guys. It's not oh, gonna, no. Right. You know, it, it, there's going to be some favorites. And I think, you know, if Demario Douglas starts, you know, lighting it up in, in training camp and Polk, and there, there may be two or three guys you take a shot at. Polk, I think, is a really good wide receiver. I, I just don't know that he's got a ceiling for fantasy. He, he's kind of in my Tyler Boyd category where he's a relevant guy who's going to, you know, if you've got a double flex, you might be able to use him, but he just doesn't seem to have the skill set to me. Like Baker, for Javon reason, Baker has, to me, a higher ceiling if if both those wide receivers were to hit. Who is the player I really wanted to see succeed in New York last year the, on the Giants? Wide receiver. Hyatt? Oh, that's what it was, Jalen Hyatt. Yeah, that that would be my uh, worry with Jalen Polk. Yeah, he yeah, has that kind of a role. The New York Jets last year seven and ten spent a third round selection on Malachi Corley. They were very excited. If you saw the video, yeah, they tried to trade up several times, got denied by team after team after team. They just wanted Malachi Corley, and then he fell farther than they thought. They still traded up and got him. Yeah, moved up seven spots to pick up Corley. To me, that you know, they had a struggle. Beyond Garrett Wilson last year. We all saw it. Yes. And so this offseason they go out and they add Mike Williams and they add Malachi Corley, a youngster, with some upside. And so, you know, and I thought I thought Xavier Gibson looked okay last year at times in the offense. I think, you know, Aaron Rodgers is a winner when you spend a third round pick on on a talent like that. Not a big one. But this offseason they added more weapons to the room and they didn't go out and add another tight end. They were in the market for uh, Brock Bowers, or at least he, they were in the rumor mill for Brock Bowers. So Tyler Conklin looks like he's going to be the starting tight end there, another winner. Yeah, on our, on our Dynasty podcast, Kyle brought up him as the veteran, the sneaky veteran winner. Uh, certainly the outlook is good there. Malachi Corley fits this offense, I think, very well. You've got Garrett Wilson, who just owns the middle of the field, like that that medium depth range. You've got when Mike Williams gets back, he's going to be the take it off the top, you know, go deep mm-hmm. guy. And then Malachi Corley, is just hang like, out like Rondell Moore. Exactly. But just get, get this screen and run over some fools and run past some guys. And, and so I think they have a plan for him, and that's really, really good. Um, if there's fools out there, you have to run them over. For if sure. If they're just You're guys, not going around fools. If they're just guys, you can run around them. Fools, you run down. You run them straight through. 100%. Straight through the face. Over and, and over <laughs> and over. If there was another player that feels that, uh, just – Michael Penix is going to sit for a little while. Braylon Allen going in the fourth round yep. behind so many more running backs. It feels like Braylon Allen's time in the NFL is getting the most difficult beginning possible where, I mean, last off season, you guys were a band of Conda boys mm-hmm. and this is Brees Hall's backfield. So Braylon Allen right now, terrible landing spot for fantasy fourth round pick terrible in terms of, yeah, like there is no immediate opportunity. He does does he get the backup job is the question, and that's th- which which it, is a question. 
Well, but in dynasty, you, you always want to have backup running backs on your roster just in case. And my guess is that Braylon will take the backup job. Jader, do you have confidence that a band of candle will hold him off? Or you think I, I have, Allen I have no confidence it? in either way. I mean, Braylon Allen can get it. Izzy can hold on to it. They drafted a fifth round running back, Isaiah Davis. Uh, I'm sure they're considering special teams for some of these picks. My view of Braylon Allen is I don't want to overdo the pre-draft hype when he fell and then fell into a bad spot. Like You could fall and fall into a good spot. Malik Washington's a six-round rookie wide receiver that I like. He fell and fell into a bad spot. He's behind not only a stud, but a young stud. I got two words for you. Isaiah Spiller. Yeah, exactly. Isaiah Spiller's story is the same story of Braylon Allen. Original, early draft, excitement around early round. Ends up going later than expected. Ends up going to a situation where he can't start from the beginning. He's not a top three round rookie pick for me. He, no. he would be a fourth round rookie pick. All right. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back with the Dolphins. Speaking of Malik Washington. Were we? Jason I just, did in I, passing. Yeah, I, I mentioned that some guys can fall in the draft but then land in a, in a good spot for them for their skill set and I, I think Malik Washington I mean he's a fast wide receiver lo, yeah. lo and behold well yeah ends up going sixth uh in the sixth round to Miami who also invested in speed on a player that dropped a little bit potent uh, a little bit Jalen Wright running back out of Tennessee a player that was coming on towards uh you know at the combine and and through that time period I really liked him lands in a spot where that speed can go into effect they reinforced the offensive line at tackle in the second round Miami um you know they're right on the edge of being you know a Super Bowl contender every year the last two years so more competition in the running back room or at least more depth so then how do you you just were you know most got the extension for your dynasty team you're obviously happy about that I think you were I, I guess I don't know Jason but you, to me, were the one most vocal about your support for Jalen Wright. He, to me, always felt like this is where he's going to go in the draft. But he's fast, and he went to the team that loves fast running backs. Do you have Raheem Mostert fears with Jalen Wright now on the team? Uh, I think Mostert has one year left. This is this is the year. So if he stays healthy, I don't have a lot of fear. But he can easily be injured. And I don't think they want Achan, who's been hurt a whole multitude of times, to be the only player involved in this offense. Jeff Wilson had a role the last couple of years. So I look at Jalen Wright as somebody that can come in, and if he establishes himself as a speedster, just another rotational guy they can put in there at the end of games when they're blowing people out to get him some snaps. But then if Mostert or Achan got went down, there's no way the other guy is taking every snap. That just won't happen in this Miami offense. It never has. That's why players like Jeff Wilson have been involved, and we, we liked Mostert, but then – Jeff Wilson the year before had almost as many snaps as Mostert. So, you know, I just think Jalen Wright will have more opportunities maybe quicker than we think he will. I don't think he'll be a fantasy-relevant guy, though. Yeah, I mean, because this is this is a split backfield. So he is essentially, even though he's the third on the depth chart, he's the backup. He's the backup to the two starters. You know, they've got a co-situation here. Um, and he is the clear next guy up. They, I don't I don't think he's fighting with anybody on the depth chart that you 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 fear he would break in. They on, wanted him. Oh yeah, I mean they they uh, they traded up for this pick, and so I you know he matches the system a lot. Like I was, I was very anti Devon Achan. I loved the film, I loved the tape, but I was out on him working and succeeding in the NFL until he went to the Dolphins. I was like, that is a perfect scheme fit. He fits this running game perfectly. And then I was super in on him. Obviously, he got injured a lot, but uh, Jalen Wright fits this system. Big bodied. Super fast guys, it's exciting. But he did drop to the fourth, and he is a backup. Yep. This is more of a long term play um, that you know, it, barring injury, is probably going to be irrelevant. And I like I don't view Jalen Wright signing personally in redraft any to impact af to affect Devon Achan or Raheem Mostert in any significant ways it, at all. I think they're going to do what they're going to do. An injury, this is depth, and then future for uh, Mostert can't do this forever. I, I see it the same. Uh, Tua gets some offensive line help, like I said, in the second round. Malik Washington, you know, there's not a, you know, there's not a role that's there for him right this moment. 
they late draft capital. They really, really wanted him. If you, if if you watched the draft, um, Mike McDaniel kept trying to for for two rounds was like trying to get him to draft Malik Washington, um, and then finally uh, beat the GM into submission, and they selected him in the sixth. Uh, He'll find a way to utilize the speed. He's a super productive. His his production profile is outrageous for his final year. Yeah, 110 still... receptions, 1,426 uh, yards, and nine touchdowns. But even I'm saying above the raw numbers, like 44% of their receptions, 47% of their yards, like their receiving yards. This guy was – he was literally half of the receiving offense for, for Virginia. And yet dropped quite a ways. Yeah, he did. So – this was also a team rumored to be in the market for Odell. That didn't come to fruition. But you'll have Waddle, you'll have Tyreek Hill, and then you'll have a number of guys. I think Barrios is still there. Uh, River Craycraft is still there. I I, I think that the, the There's an wide, opportunity. wide receiver three was a was a need for the Dolphins. Yeah, Robbie Chosen. Is he still there? No, he's not there. Oh. But, but they had to go out and get that last year in the middle of the season, so, to Jason's point. All right, let's talk about the Buffalo Bills. I'm pretty excited to discuss this team because Keon Coleman ends up going in the second round, but the first pick of the second round, the Bills traded back two times in the first. They end up sticking at 33, which I think is relevant because every team comes calling for that first pick of the second round. 6'4", 215. His 40 time got a bunch of uh, bitter beer faces from the draft community. Um, but... The Bills believed in him over a lot of other more popular names to come in and fill the X role after shipping out Stephon Diggs, shipping out Gabe Davis, letting him go, and are in desperate need of a playmaker and a touchdown scorer in this offense. And those things are what Keon Coleman can do. You listen to the uh, Billy Bean, right, as the general manager, mm -hmm. and you listen to him talk about Keon Coleman and the fact that they're going to expect big things from him and Josh Allen expects big things from him on day one. Brandon it, Bean. Brandon Bean. Billy Bean. <laughs> Did I was like, the baseball guy? No, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Bean, yes. You were so quick. Mr. Like, Mike, Bean Mike, is Mike what Bailey. I should have said. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Rowan Atkinson? <laughs> yeah, so, so Keon Coleman, I'm really excited to talk about him. It, it makes Josh Allen a winner in the fact that they invested high draft capital on a, on a wide receiver and makes, you know, we weren't really worried about Allen. But yeah. I think in the back of your mind, you're like they're going to add somebody. I don't. I don't care if he has weapons to throw too much or not. He had 15 rushing touchdowns this last year. They started using using the tush push. Um, but even you can't. Like we were doing our stats for Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Neither of us have the guts to do more than nine or ten on a projection. So in that case, you're like, yeah, that's what saved his season. He only threw 24 touchdowns. He did have a three. Well, and that's that's kind of what is a little bit um, comforting is the fact that Stephon Diggs did almost nothing the second half of the season once they had the coordinator change, and Josh Allen was still very relevant. 29 passing touchdowns. The, Wait, no. Sorry. Yeah, 29. Yeah. The, the, check, check again. <laughs> well, the 24 was the, the sack number, so that got a little thrown off. But, yeah, 29. Yeah, I mean, the, the situation here for Keon Coleman can't find a much better situation. The Bills were on the clock. They could have drafted Xavier Worthy. They chose to trade back. Then they were on the clock. They could have drafted Xavier Leggett. They chose to trade back. They're like, I don't like guys named Xavier. That's their yeah, – they just don't like – they're maybe. like – Well, because you don't know, is it Xavier or is it Xavier? Yeah, and mm -hmm. I think it's one of each. It's and so it's like, well, let's just take Coleman. So they trade back again, one more spot, and take Keon Coleman with the first pick of the second round. He's a guy that – Andy, you really liked this film. Yeah. I liked this film. I was I was more in. But his production profile is very confusing. He dominates games and then disappears. And that is what you, you hope they did not just get another Gabe Davis, where it's like this guy can go out there and explode and absolutely disappear. Um, I think TBD. he's going to be more involved. I, I do. I think he'll be more involved. He's who I, I – I think as a rookie, he'll lead them in receiving. I – I think Dalton Kincaid leads them in receiving, but I will say that I love the fact that this guy is so young. He had a breakout age at 19.3, so this is a player that is still improving, and if he is given opportunity in his rookie year from a dynasty perspective, I expect him to grow into a good wide receiver. Yeah, his his yards per route run as from the collegiate profile is lower than what we're really hoping for. He's His, high, his highlight film is incredible. But his the low lights are they're really really bad. The and, lights off. You just yes. turn the lights off. Yeah, 
And I mean, I, I get it. Like I have Coleman. I'm really excited for the, the location. It's, you know, that and the Kansas City Chiefs were kind of – that's the, the two big spots easily. But it just – and it, yeah, it's Josh Allen versus New England. But that's just my point of Jalen Polk was four picks after this guy. And he goes in the third round. So it's just that that whole certainty thing about about players' outcomes is is in, is interesting. Josh Allen, before the draft, texted him, you're the guy that I wanted, and they went out and got him. That did not work as well for the Clyde edwards alaire <laughs> patrick Mahomes situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, quarterback GMs. Yeah, that's what you need. So I, I'm excited to see what happens there. You know, when you look at trying to project a breakout season from Khalil Shakir or Curtis Samuel, um, I think those guys are negatively impacted, obviously, because targets are going to go to the player you invested your first pick in the draft on. Uh, not concerned at all about Dalton Kincaid. And to be clear, I was projecting him as the leader in the wide receiver room. Gotcha. Because uh, I agree with you. I think I have Kincaid's yardage a little we'll, bit higher. We'll, we'll see because he he was not a separator. So we'll see if he can. Coleman. Yeah, yeah. Keon Coleman was not a separator. and Yeah, he's bigger than you, though. Neither was Allen Robinson. That's who he – that's what no, the profile. No, Rob, Robinson as a younger guy was a separator. He was like Robinson's a, a, pre his premier years and uh, several. I mean, there's other receivers like that. I think Mike Evans is one of them, and their premier years, fantasy production wise, were not big separation years. But I'm saying it just when that is your calling card coming from college, like that's what you have. It's so why did the Bills want him? No, because they. Why did the Chargers want? Quentin Johnston because like they go after guys in high level programs I, again I have Coleman ranked extremely high I'm just giving the the bear case here I, I think Coleman develops into a, a good wide receiver I'm a little down on his rookie year production they also added Ray Davis out of Kentucky the running back I really like him he's old as dirt for a rookie <laughs> for, especially for a rookie for running a back rookie. 24 and a half years old that is. What does that make you today, birthday boy? <laughs> you shut your mouth. I'm not a running back. For a podcaster, he is. I'm young. He's a young man. Yeah. In its prime. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I got 40 more years of this in me. Uh, but I, I liked Ray Davis. He can catch the ball. He's a thicker back at 216 pounds, 5'10. And there is opportunity here. You know that they don't like using James Cook around the goal line. And so. Uh, He's a talented guy. Obviously, James Cook being a little undersized, should an injury happen. Ray Davis is a little bit interesting to me. This is a team willing to play Leonard Fournette regularly. Exactly. So Ray Davis Murray. will have a shot to rotate in for sure if he wins the job. Any other thoughts on those? Uh, nope. On the, all right. Let's move on. The, the Chargers, they spent the pick directly after Keon Coleman on. Oh, Lad McConkey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a real hard time really not doing do an that. Irish accent with oh, Lad McConkey. You have a hard time doing an Irish accent. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's also fair. Um, that's also true. I uh, Lad McConkey is a guy that I think all three of us really, really liked. Yeah. yeah. Um, loved the film. He gets open. He's got great hands. He has uh, phenomenal speed. He's not like a real strong run-you-over guy, but I mean, the, the role that Keenan Allen is leaving, and obviously there's a whole new system. This isn't going to be Kellen Moore or or you know um, the the older days. This is a run first system, and I think too much is run of second that, system as well. And and too much of that has been made. They're still going to throw the ball a lot. Lad McConkey is immediately the best wide receiver on this team, I believe. I think uh, Palmer is fine. Quentin Johnston, they hope can develop, but Lad McConkey is is really good. His production wasn't great in college, but his talent was good, and he played for Georgia where. He just wasn't needed to produce. Yeah, it's it's wild. Obviously, we all have the scars of the Quentin Johnston first round, every opportunity on earth, oppor you know, situation last uh -huh. year that didn't pan out. But I'm excited for McConkey. He has a, a a great opportunity as a as a rookie. They traded up for him. I've been talking about the maybe undervaluing of the passing game here. This is football. Okay, you can have a high T philosophy and you can bring in offensive linemen. Which, by the way, that makes Justin Herbert a winner to me. You're going to protect him. You're going to put him in a position where his health is not going to um, be a problem. But you have to throw the football. Like you're, If I've watched the Chargers, they always have a defense that looks like it's going to be good. They always give up points, and they always have to throw the football. So uh, good situation for McConkie. I know that Coleman and McConkie are probably fairly neck and neck in rookie, oh, yeah. rookie draft situations, and it's a preferential thing. Uh, I like the – 
ceiling passing volume of Buffalo versus the slot opportunity for McConkie. Like, I, I just worry a little bit, and I love Lad McConkey. I worry a little bit that McConkey could be simultaneously an incredible, valuable San, Di- uh, San Diego Charger. Wow. Los Angeles Charger mm-hmm. and not really – fantasy important I, I completely like agree. five or six catches a week but it's 60 yards and no touchdown yeah I mean th- I, I've got those fears like Lad McConkey, Roman Wilson these guys that are just super good wide receivers there are ceiling issues for fantasy football where you wonder can they really develop into a uh, uh, you know a really really valuable fantasy asset or or if he's going to be you know Hunter Renfro um which I remind you was a top 12 wide receiver. I'd say I'll take one a time. year a top 12 But um, I, I'm on the McConkie side over Coleman just because I am more confident in the talent, but the ceiling is on the Coleman side. All right. Uh, anybody else you want to touch on there? Yeah, Did they it? drafted Vidal Sassoon. <laughs> yeah, baby. Vidal Sassoon in the <laughs> sixth round. Kimani, uh, which it, in his last name, we're still working on it because watching – Game film of it, it sounded like the announcers were saying Vidal. Yeah, but and with then the, Sassoon. And then the official NFL draft I know how to say Sassoon. is Vidal. So we're, we'll track this one down, but apparently it's Kamani Vidal Sassoon. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> and the reason that he, he is actually, too good. He has to be talked about because, look, around six running back out of Troy, so out of a smaller school, like production. It doesn't work. No, well, I know. I'm just saying. What <laughs> doesn't usually work? The the hair product. The sixth round. No, Vidal Sassoon <laughs> always works. Okay. Um, his his production profile is soft, shiny, is sensational, and people are like this. This is the name. If you have not seen it yet, you will, because he is absolutely getting steamed up because in the, the shower. Yeah. Because he's a conditioner <laughs> yes. and a shampoo. That's right. He's a, he's leaving in. And your hair is silky smooth for days. Uh-huh. Healthy, <laughs> healthy hair. It it makes sense because they ju- they gave the the contract went to Gus Edwards, who is an older guy. They bring in J.K. Dobbins, who's healing from an Achilles. Like the depth chart is not outrageously locked I in. I don't know. I don't know. I hear from J.K. Dobbins himself that. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, I, I heard that too. That the Achilles is no problem. This is basically an ankle sprain. It's he nothing compared that. to the knee. He did say that. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> uh, they also drafted uh, Jerry Rice's son in the seventh round. That Brandon nice. Rice. That was nice Brandon of Rice. them. And uh, you know, then then depth chart at wide receiver a little bit there. So you never know. Yep. Uh, moving on, the Denver Broncos. Uh, I feel like I need to hand like a microphone to Jason because we we <laughs> talked about the we talked about the Broncos for a long time this morning. Yeah, before you were here, Mike, we had a lot of conversation. More? Oh, so much. Jason has become he's <laughs> gone down the well because let me let me just he's explain. Into obsession. Yeah. Let me just set the table. the The Broncos spent pick twelve on Bo Nix, the quarterback they always wanted, no matter what. Of course. Because they, he was there. Because he was there. And, uh, you know, Sean Payton last year didn't work with Russell Wilson. Bo Nix is his new guy. And then Jason had a hard time at the draft. Jason had a hard time because one of his favorite players on the college tape was Troy Franklin. Hey, it's Franklin. And it was Franklin's bad day. Yes, it was. Because he drops. Yeah, bad days. Bad days. And he dropped to the fourth round. Pick. Uh, he's a wide receiver 16 off the board, which, woof, compared to where. I mean, he was. some people thought top five. Some people thought yeah. first round. It was a tough day for Troy Franklin, obviously. And if you watch, Jason showed me this. Uh, there's a nice chat between Bo Nix, his college quarterback, and Troy Franklin. And Troy Franklin said something to the extent of, well, it's okay now. <laughs> like, it was a long wait for him. And so Franklin ends up in Denver with a new quarterback. Uh, the wide receiver room is weird. I'm going to throw it out there as weird because, you know, Marvin Mims was a much higher pick than Troy Franklin and had opportunity last year, at least we thought he would, and he didn't get it. Cortland Sutton scored a bunch of touchdowns. He's unhappy. Jerry Judy's no longer there. Tim Patrick's back from injury. And here arrives Troy Franklin, who has a built-in rapport with Bo Nix. Yeah, the the reason 
so this was a, a two-step process. Um, before Franklin went here, uh, you know, on day two, I, I rewatched Bo Nix, knowing now that he is going to Sean Payton, going to this offense, and I was really impressed. I, I you know, when I when I scouted him the first time, I, I focused a lot on all the screen game and all this, but he's a good quarterback. I don't know why. I've heard so many people say he's a day two, day three, like a third round talent, maybe. But he makes all the throws. He threw forty five touchdowns and like three interceptions on the season. Broke the NCAA record for, uh, you know, uh, completion percentage. completion percentage. And I do think he fits the timing type of system that Peyton wants to play. And and it, I don't think it was a joke that they all they wanted um, Bo Nix the whole time. Peyton talked about how after um, Drake May went, they they thought, okay, well, the, you know, we're we're safe. Um, when the Giants didn't take a quarterback, they thought, hey, let me call uh, the the Broncos or the, let me call myself. Let me call the Vikings. Um, and the Raiders, and tell them, let's just all stay put because we all are going to get our guy until the Falcons select the Pinnocks. And then he's like, oh, no. <laughs> now now there's now there's a question. They wanted Bo Nix. He fits their system, so I really like him. And then, and then they drafted Troy Franklin after a bad fall, but this was a second-round grade in this house. Uh, they traded up. Which, they, ha your house? In the Broncos uh, oh. facility. They uh, Peyton said he was... He fell two rounds according Which to their value. The Broncos were lacking picks. They were lacking picks. They didn't have a third. They traded two fourths and a sixth to move up and get him at the very top of the fourth round. So it's like Luke McCaffrey was a third round pick. Luke McCaffrey was two picks ahead of Troy Franklin, who they spent two extra fourths. So I don't I don't see this as like yes, he fell. Yes, he does not inherit great rope from expensive draft capital. That's true. But they did yeah, invest, you, and the opportunity is there for him. Let, let, let me ask you a, maybe a question we didn't talk about this morning. If you believe in Bo Nix and his potential, then do you believe in Marvin Mims? Do you believe in Cortland Sutton? Because these players have the inside track at opportunity. Like the A lot of people made a lot of Marvin Mims last year because it was a Peyton guy. Mm -hmm. It was one of his first selections ever. And he still chose to hold him back. So now coming into year two, like I know there's going to be a lot of talk about Nixon and Franklin, but is should there be talks about Marvin Mims having an opportunity to to maybe be so uh, relevant? That, yeah, I mean it, it, you, we're going to see as as time goes on how this breaks down. I do think Marvin Mims is part of the plan. I think he's more of a slot guy. Um, they came out and said Peyton came out and said they they see Franklin as the Z receiver, which is the off the line receiver. That's the guy they're going to be putting in motion. That's great for him. He's going to avoid press coverage because he's a smaller, thinner guy. They're going to utilize his speed, get him in space. Bo Nix is going to find him. Rookie year, I don't really have Bo Nix doing something great. Like, I statted out the Denver Broncos. I've got him throwing for just over 3,000 yards and only 16 touchdowns. So, Cortland Sutton, I don't see as part of the future. I think he's a one-and-done player this year. That's my guess. Um, Franklin, I do see successful, just not necessarily rookie year Bo Nix. I think this is a team building for the future. Mike, in the fifth round, they grabbed a running back, Audric Estime. Yeah, he's he's an interesting running back out of Notre Dame. Uh, it, along with all the other running backs, you know, kind of behind Brooks and Benson, it was just this cluster of it, people had certain running backs hires, and Estimate was one of the, the one of the guys that did fall into the fifth round. And it's the the, the bull case, which I'm not overly excited. Yes, I like our rookie draft ended. I paid up Fab to get Estime on on the roster as a let's just in case where you know Javante was the first year off the injury it was not great and he is also uh, in the last year of his contract. Samaj P Ryan was the free agent brought in to kind of help supplement Javante Williams. It didn't go so well for he stunk. He, <laughs> take it did not go so well for Samaj P Ryan. And on top of all of that, on top of all of that. Sean Payton always has a running back by committee. So there I think there's a sliver of of hope for if you were on the estimate camp. There's a chance. It just it's low probability. They have Julio McLa McLaughlin yeah, too. As well, yeah. That's a tough name. <laughs> All right, moving on.
Got to be honest, the last episode of the show put a little more fear in my name pronunciation, <laughs> if I'm being honest. The Raiders surprised us, grabbed Brock Bowers in the first round, surprised us because they spent a second rounder last year. Mind you, it wasn't the current coaching staff on Michael Mayer, who's just 22 years old. So uh, quick winner-loser count. We'll put Mayer up as a loser, unfortunately. Yeah. He would have been in the sleeper category going into the year. Brock Bowers, though, I mean, this is a very special talent. Uh, you can go back two years and look at how players were ranked in college football, and Brock Bowers is a top 15 guy two years ago before he had his senior season. I believe he led Georgia in receiving yards all three years. Kyle, is that correct? I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> how do you not know, Georgia boy? Yeah, I feel like Brock Bowers and Goodness. you – Goodness. Like, you were probably looking at the back of a trading card right now. But incredibly young breakout age, 13 receiving touchdowns as a freshman. This is the number one situation I think people will make a mistake on. Is letting him fall too far? Yes. I I, I, I know it sounds crazy, but I genuinely think Brock Bowers will be just fine in, in Las Vegas. You take the long view of this guy. I think he's going to be totally fine and he'll be a dominator for fantasy. And it, it might not be this year because it rarely is. But give him a couple years. They'll figure the quarterback situation out a little bit. And Brock Bowers will be 22. And um, I just – I know people were revolted by it. And our grade was based on best potential destination. And this was not the best potential destination. Right. Yeah, especially not But I do think these things will just – they'll work themselves out. I mean, Jason Talent already – works out. Jason already laid out his thoughts on the quarterback play for the Raiders. Yeah. yeah, he said that the guy that's slightly better than Trevor Lawrence is no good. That's correct. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, he doesn't have a great quarterback situation. He's behind a bunch of other target earners, um, certainly you know, in Devontae Adams, and then he's got tight end competition with a guy who's got a, a somewhat similar skill set. So will Brock Bowers be good in the NFL? Yes. Will he be good for fantasy? I think probably not. Not for a while. Like you Michael know, Mayer at, is the Dawson Knox to his – to his Kincaid. Sure, he might be, but there's still no Josh Allen. So um, yeah, I, I, I will say that um, for me, I am fine letting Brock Bowers go by me in rookie drafts while I take high upside um, wide receivers and the two Oof, running backs. Not me. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that that's a tough gamble in rookie drafts, philosophically speaking, it is. because you know that half of those wide receivers are going to fail. Mm -hmm. I mean, they always do. But then it's like Brock Bowers – and like 90% of the tight ends. Not, I mean, not 90% of the tight ends. Well, I'm just saying that the, the ones that, like, when we draft Brock Bowers in the first round, we're hoping we're getting Travis Kelsey. We're not hoping that we get the tight end five or six. That doesn't really help in fantasy. They're, they're not difference makers. When you get Evan Ingram, Evan Ingram had a great season. Evan Ingram's pretty irrelevant. Like, that, that it, doesn't, it doesn't help you in fantasy. He really, really doesn't. Um, if you drafted Mark Andrews, though. Yeah, absolutely. Like if, if Brock Bowers is Mark Andrews, that, that pick is worth five of the wide receivers you passed per, 100%. But Mark Andrews went behind Dallas Goddard, Mike Kosicki, Hayden Hurst. Well, it's not on Brock Bowers. It's not his fault no, for I know, that to have happened. My, my, it's just you got to look at the talent of Brock Bowers. My point is not the NFL itself is usually not great at getting the tight end position perfect. He had, I, he, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Saying. But he's one of the best in college football history. And the sample size is unfair. It's just not fair. The tight end sample size is so tiny. You just got to let Brock Bowers be himself, man. And whether they can allow that, the team can set him free like that, that's the question. Samir White has the last name of White, which means he did what Rashad White did last year and evade all competition. Dude, Samir White, huge winner. I mean, at like at this point, with all with the guys that are out there, like still roaming the streets looking for a new job. Kareem Hunt. Yeah, uh, Ew. Uh, Dalvin Cook. I mean, Ew. Ew. there's uh, like, is there is there is there, is there a player that we are not remembering right now at the top of our heads? I am trying to Sanders? find one. Ba Barry? Barry Barry Sanders. <laughs> I thought you were saying Miles. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like I don't think that there's anyone. Uh, there's no one left. Dalvin Cook, Rashad Penny, Cam Akers, Latavius Murray, Kareem Hunt, Matt Breida. Yeah, Melvin got, Gordon, Brandon Bolden. Like you've how, gone way too far already. How I know, is it, and I apologize. How was it not Zamir White this year? It is year? Zamir White. 
It is. I will say this. Right now, if I could trade him on a high, if someone is wanting to pay up for a young guy who, who could very well have 250 carries and be fantasy relevant this year, I still would because he's – whenever these – you talk about the dead zone running backs that happen every single year. Those are usually guys who have found themselves in a situation of volume, but they aren't necessarily the most talented backs, and those are who usually I don't fail. know that we know, though. Like, it is Alexander Madison from last year. No, no, yes, a little bit of that, but it's not as – Madison was in the in the league a lot longer. But Zamir White, what year? Are we going into year three or year four for him? Uh, Should be three, three, right? So the point being – yeah, we, year three. Year, so if it's year three, we really don't know if Zamir White is a good player. He's been he's been trapped behind Josh Jacobs, who's been their workhorse guy. Say, if you just watched Jacobs last year, you definitely think Zamir White's good. And uh, then those those final four weeks where it it was Zamir White time, the dude was a fantasy beast. He was, and I will say that I so maybe he maybe uh, he is good. I don't Rashad think we, White ended we don't up know a yet. beast. I do almost always bet. On any running back that is 215 pounds or greater and runs 4-4 four, four or under. Those almost always work. That is exactly what he is. 215 pounds, 4-4. Four, four. So you are super in my guy? I, no, I, I think he will be good. I'm just saying if I could trade him for long-term value in a dynasty league, I'm open to that. Yeah, I'd, I'd be open to that. And I don't if, think people are paying up for Zamir White, though. That's the problem. And if you can trade for – if you can pay like a rental price knowing that Zamir – Zemir would you White trade is, Mostert for is him? probably replaced later. Would you trade Mostert for him in a dynasty? I league? would rather have Mostert. I think they're both mostly That's relevant. That's the only this kind year. of deal you're going to get. Yeah. Man, Mostert or Samir? Yeah. That is tough. Yeah. It's, number two running back yeah. from last year yep. versus uh, probably one year expiration. We got to move on. The Chiefs, they drafted a player that Mike likes quite a bit. Take it away. He's just, he's the fastest man alive. He is. Not a lie, but he's the fastest man ever at the NFL Combine. It's Xavier Worthy, or is he one of the Xaviers? I think he's Xavier Worthy. Okay, Xavier Worthy out of Texas. Vidal Sassoon. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you've all signed up for, podcast listeners. But he this uh, he, went he to weighs the Kansas 12 City. pounds. He goes to the Kansas City Chiefs, pick 28 overall. The Kansas City Chiefs tr managed to trade up with their arch nemesis, the Buffalo Bills. And go get the wide receiver, which they really needed wide That's receiver. That's such help. a funny trade because they both needed. Yes, they both had their guys. Yeah, and I, one of them told the other. There's no question; they had to. Him. I yeah, probably. It, they both wanted the wide receiver. Like if, if Kansas City had wanted Keon Coleman, I, the Bills. I wonder. I, the I, Bills aren't going to do that deal. I think there is probably a strong chance that they said, "Who are who are you coming up? We won't move unless you tell us who you're coming up for." So there is a good chance of that. It's to Patrick Mahomes. It's a guy with speed. It's a it's a depth chart that needs wide receiver help. I know they signed Hollywood Brown to a one year deal. Don't really care about that. Rasheed Rice, how long is he suspended? We have to find out. And the it's to me, this situation is it's easy to comp it to everything that they've done lately. Of the Chiefs have been terrible at finding wide receivers, aside from Rice, who seems to have worked out on the field. But it's like, like MVS, McCole Hardman. To me, the worthy pick is not that. McCall Hardman was a full reaction to thinking that they had lost Tyreek Hill to his like car a career-ending off-the-field incident, and they were. That is, you don't see the parallels here. No, I see. I McCall see. McCall Hardman fell in I'm the second round I see and had the parallel. no production. He it, he never hit 700 yards as yes, a and collegiate. I'm talking athlete. about the team's philosophy. What you're saying correct. that Rasheed Rice I, might by be the way, I believe in I believe in Xavier Worthy. I just see very. I mean, they they didn't know how much Tyreek Hill they'd have, so they reacted and bought, got another burner. They didn't know how much Rashi Rice they're going to have, so they react and drafted a, a wide receiver. But At that the point time, being, but there's a difference between looking at your player going, we're probably gonna, not going to have him for four weeks or whatever it is, versus what the the feeling of of that time mm -hmm. was. Tyreek is done. He will never play another snap for the NFL. That's what the feeling that was. That is what it seemed like. It was not a suspension here or there. It was toast. So and, they, but they chose the guy with the production profile that you said wasn't very good as the replacement for yes, the guy that was going to be gone. As in, Mc, as their decision, like McCole Hardman, right? They own that. McCole Hardman was he's he's fast. That's all we have in McCole Hardman, and we're going to hope that it works. Whereas Xavier Worthy has an actual production profile, broke out as a freshman, 
and then was a good player throughout his career. So I, the the parallels of the situation are definitely there, but I see enough variables on the side of worthy that I think that this time it will work. Where are you at with him, Jay? Yeah, I, I, I like the pick. I, I believe that he is actually a good route runner and a good wide receiver, not just fast. And so you put that with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, I think it will work out. I liked Rushy Rice last year because I thought he was good, and I said you've got to take each one of these players individually on their own. Sky Moore came from a tiny conference. Miko Hardman had no production profile and was a huge reach when they grabbed him in the second. Right. I actually liked Rushy Rice. I actually like Xavier Worthy, so I – I'm in on Worthy. He's my wide receiver four, my fourth player overall in rookie drafts right now. Hollywood Brown, it's a downgrade for his one-year trial there. It's a downgrade, in my opinion, for Rice, uh, just because you know that target distribution is something we've seen as a recipe for the Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, you know, is is Rice – like, if you love Worthy, it has to come at some expense of Rice. Yeah, I, I think they can both be, like – wide receiver two type players and then obviously they still have watson and tony and uh sky Moore and do they still have sky Moore? He, uh here's a funny fact there's in the last decade there's only been four wide receivers drafted in the first round under 180 pounds half of them now play for the chiefs yeah i mean he's 165 pounds like he does not profile to be i mean we'll see we'll see i don't want to argue about him uh tennessee six and eleven Last season, they go tackle with their first pick, and they don't dance around with quarterbacks. They've got a wide receiver room that's filled, and this is a really quick one we can breeze through. Yep. But Will Levis, it's a it's a pat on the butt saying, we're going to give you a year to be the guy. Yeah, they've given him offensive line help, wide receiver help in the free agency period, and he's I, – I, th I, I think I'm going to be surprised how high he is in my rankings. I, I don't want to say that out loud. Nor should you. Uh, the Colts, they spent a second rounder on Adonai Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell slipped a little bit in this draft as well, but of all the teams he was in the midst of, I was pretty happy with the destination. Attached to a big-time quarterback in Anthony Richardson with Michael Pittman on the other side of the field and a depth chart that is not intimidating Josh Downs, Alec Pierce. So, you know, for a guy that ran a 4-3-40, who I really liked, I liked him more uh, – I think he's a more complete receiver, in my opinion, than Xavier Worthy, and so I I really liked him. I think that the spot is the the spot in the draft capital is is fantastic for him. So yeah, I'm I think he can succeed. I like the I like the fact that he doesn't have to go be an alpha for his team right away, or will he can or the alpha for the next few years as Michael Pittman has secured the bag. Just be part of a great offense that we want pieces of. So I, I do. I like the spot, too. It's good for Anthony Richardson. It's great yes, it for is. Anthony Richardson, a, a, a big-bodied guy who can get touchdowns. This is a player who I, I know I've spoken down of, but I've spoken down of him by comparison to his first-round hype. He's still a good wide receiver, and he's going to immediately take over the Alec Pierce role. If you compare Alec Pierce to Adonai Mitchell, there's no comparison. Adonai Mitchell is a much better wide receiver, much better prospect than Alec Pierce. So he'll be on the field. He'll be catching bombs. I love the spot for him. The only downside to me is that there were some destinations he could go to where he could try to be the one. That's not happening with Michael Pittman there. The three years, $70 million, he's going to be the complement um, to the incumbent. I agree with that, although I do look at Pittman more like Keenan Allen. Sure. On an offense, yeah. where at least you're 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 not uh, it, honestly, it's not Jamar Chase. Keenan, like Pittman is much more Keenan. Sure. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, yeah. kind of situation could, could very well too. be this. Jacksonville, they spent their first round draft pick on Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver out of out of LSU. Their off season, they lost Calvin Ridley. They bring in Brian Thomas Jr. and Gabe Davis. Seventeen touchdowns, led the NCAA last year. I loved everything I saw in film from Brian Thomas in the shadow of Malik Neighbors there at LSU. This situation, I think we talked a little bit about it um, when we were doing the draft special, just the fact that Trevor Lawrence at this stage of his career is woefully inconsistent. He is not a player that, like when he goes bad, he goes bad, bad, bad. And I think he's a D in our consistency charts. And so that part is concerning as a rookie year opportunity. Calvin Ridley had big games. I think Brian Thomas will have big games in this offense. He, he has a... Skill set that complements a Christian Kirk, and 
I think he will have huge opportunities to go out there and make big plays. But one week it's going to be a Gabe Davis touchdown. Another week it'll be Christian Kirk's day. Another week Lawrence will be off. And then Brian Thomas slots in every fourth week. And that's that's concerning as a rookie. Yeah, and Brian Thomas, super exceptional athlete. Not like, you know, all these guys are great athletes. He is better than the, than the other ones. Uh, he's a little bit more raw as a prospect to me. He only had one year of great production. But he lands in a perfect situation where you got a 27-year-old Christian Kirk who's a slot guy. And so unlike the Michael Pittman style, you could see him – develop and grow into becoming the wide receiver one uh for trevor lawrence so there, there is this uh, there's a situation where you know when jefferson came into minnesota and you had Thielen and you mm -hmm. had kj osborne and you just muddy the water but then the best talent shows itself in about 10 seconds like this is a group that that could happen in my opinion well gabe davis is there though <laughs> like i said <laughs> yeah it's a, it's, a, it's a great spot um so, Gabe the Babe takes a hit if you were going to take your shot on him again, Jason. And then Zay Jones took the biggest hit. He was released. Yeah, because of the rookies. And it's good for Trevor Lawrence to get another. Thanks to the rookies. Yeah. Super big talent back. And I threw Travis Etienne as a winner because, you know, talk to talk, walk to walk, they did nothing. And it's going to be the same depth chart, which means you're counting on Tink Bigsby to take a leap. Yeah, it's they hard. Are. To, it's hard to do it. Tanks don't leap. Tanks just roll. Yeah, so it's Travis Etienne's backfield. I'm kind of um, excited about him. Houston. Are we done talking about Houston? I mean, they spent a fourth-round pick on Cade Stover, talented guy. He was he was the tight end, um, the, the former tight end of C.J. Stroud, so that's a little exciting. But there's a three-year deal for Dalton Schultz, so pretty irrelevant. They, they focused elsewhere because they've – They've done their offense this uh, – they got digs in this trade uh, or in this draft, essentially. They use draft capital to grab digs. All right, Mike, Cincinnati. Jermaine Burton arrives yeah. in the third round. This uh, Out of Alabama, really, really talented athlete. This was an obvious target for Cincinnati. They went after him. No more Tyler Boyd. T. Higgins is on a uh, – Franchise. He's on a, yeah, it's like the last day of his Airbnb there. Yes, and so, you know, this is good news for Joe Burrow, having another weapon. It is. And We've had injuries for both Chase and Higgins. And Burton, at least last year, was a downfield guy with an average depth of target over 20 yards. That's where the ball would find him on the field. Like, that, that is outrageous. Now, his, his targets per route run lower than we would like, but he, but he is a third-round pick who a lot of draft – whispers I should say I I don't know these because uh, I don't know Jermaine Burton and I don't know the situation but evaluating his talent saying he is one of the better wide receivers in the draft but he has some it sounds like attitude off the field situations that teams were wrestling with which where did Pickens go last year or two years ago second round okay I just remember he dropped yeah in a similar situation so it, it, it could be it could be like something like that at least you know what they're saying out there, but he is like, I think it's a huge upgrade for for Joe Burrow this year, and then just drafting him in dynasty, waiting for T Higgins to be gone. Burton should, if the if the Bengals are hit on their draft pick, Burton will slide in as the wide receiver two for Joe Burrow starting next season, and that's a very exciting guy to have on your and, roster. And you don't really have to wait for T Higgins to be gone. Tyler Boyd was very involved in this offense and Tyler Boyd's gone. So he's got a little bit of opportunity rookie year. He's tied to a great quarterback, uh, Jermaine Burton with day two draft capital and a leaving T Higgins. Uh, it's a great rookie pick for upside. If you're, you know, dynasty diving for, uh, Andre Yoshivas or Charlie Jones or Trent Irwin, uh, it gets muddy now at yes. the bottom of that depth chart. Fancy but winners. Uh, fantasy winners certainly Zach Moss, Chase Brown. Um, they they didn't address the running back position. Right. Zach Moss, I think, is going to have a fantastic season. I would also throw out Eric All. It's a name that you need to know at tight end round four, only because he's from Iowa. Because okay. Iowa tight ends always work. Okay. I mean, that's uh, Zach Moss versus uh, Zamir White. I'll take Zach Moss. Ooh, that's tough. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, I'll take the offense. 
just I'm, I'm much cut more that clip out. I'll <laughs> he's take always been Zach a big Zach Moss, Moss guy. Yeah, lifelong Zach Moss fan. Pittsburgh, they said we think our quarterback might perform better, and our running backs might perform better if we protected them and blocked for them. First round pick on an offensive lineman, second round pick on a center, third round pick on Roman Wilson, uh, who I adore. Wide, re so wide receiver out of Michigan. He's yes. so good. He's just solid. Yeah. It's perfect on the other, you know, when you have George Pickens, who is, you know, big plays and flashy plays. Roman Wilson's like, go to work and just get it done. And, yeah. It, you know, Heinz Ward esque. I mean, very similar. So big news for whoever plays quarterback. You're going to be in a better situation. Another wide receiver on the roster. But, um, and it's, it's hard to ignore the shine that the the Steelers have had when they're drafting wide receivers. Yes, there are misses in there, but there are just so many hits compared to what other teams have been able to do in the draft. So you when the Steelers take a guy in day two, your your antenna better go it's up. It's pretty much attention. a sure thing. It's, Not it, to be a star. But I like, didn't want to say it, but it's pretty much a sure thing. They, they are very good at <laughs> – Kidding? <laughs> Unless it's Martavis. Well, yeah, but, I mean Martavis on, was great, but, but on then the he, field, it wasn't really their fault. On, I mean, Chase, it sort of was, but Chase Claypool absolutely vanished. Oh yeah, but Chase Claypool as a rookie, pretty pretty good for the Steelers. Cleveland. We don't have a lot to talk about here, but no. I'll focus on the fact they didn't bring in more running back names. So Jerome Ford yep. and Deontay Foreman will be sharing the load ahead of the return of Nick Chubb, who worked a redone deal. Uh, they basically sent their picks away to get Jerry Judy. So let's not forget that Jerry Judy and Amari Cooper are the wide receiver room, fifth rounder on Jamari Thrash, and um, Which if it's Jam a pretty boring draft. If Jamari Thrash doesn't skateboard, I will be devastated. Oh, uh, just that would be name, hard yeah. on you. Yeah, I can would. see that. And Jerry Judy, if you ever wanted to really believe in him, you put him next to Elijah Moore. So yeah, I think he yeah. uh, is a superior wide receiver to Elijah Moore. Not good. Elijah Moore. Hmm. More like less. Right? Oh, I mean, yeah, you got him. It's unfortunate. I, I forget the numbers, but I was I was statting them out recently, and I just was blown away by Elijah Moore's combination of average depth of target and catch, catch percentage. percentage. Yeah, it's like it's... how – usually those things are completely <laughs> like the shorter the average depth of target, right? the yep. higher catch percentage, and you're really impressed. No, this was like he gets no average depth of target and also catches nothing. Every time you target him, they take a little money out of your bank account. <laughs> it's just it was like, wow, gross. Yeah, he, he had a 57% catch percentage. <laughs> but at least it was super tar close to the line of scrimmage. 104 targets, caught 59 of them, and it was 10.8 a catch. Yeah, gross. That is uh, – that's wild. All right, Baltimore spent a fourth-round draft pick on Devontae Walker out of North Carolina. Um, you know, worst there are worse places for a wide receiver to have landed. I am not very excited. I like him. I I always thought this entire draft process that he was like a, a poor man's Adonai Mitchell. He is 6'2", runs 4'3", 6". He, he's... He's, I think, pretty good, but he goes to a great spot where they lost Odell Beckham. And, yeah, that's true. And so he, you know, he's going to be able to streak down the field and have a bomb from Lamar Jackson, and hopefully he can hit Devontae Walker uh, better than he can hit Rashad Bateman, who signed a uh, extension. An extension. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, does it cause you to downgrade Flowers or Bateman? Or no, I don't think so. I, th I, th I think they, you know, they needed someone to replace Odell Beckham. And it's going to be uh, – who else do they have? Uh, Aguilar's there. Yeah, it's Aguilar and Devontae Walker for that third spot. And what is the running back depth chart now? Derek Henry, Quinn uh, – Keaton, Keaton Mitchell. Keaton Mitchell. Yes. Keaton Mitchell's coming back off, off of, of a de pretty devastating well, I guess, injury. I and, just and Justice Hill – no, you, you are not wrong that Rasheen Ali out of Marshall, who also he has – like he got he had a year where he got hurt fifth round draft pick uh but yeah so running back his he has two years of just monstrous production and he is i he is an interesting player as like it would not be shocking for him to be the true backup uh for Henry when the season starts while Mitchell's healing up isn't there somebody else on that depth chart Justice that, Hill I know somebody else 
Uh, Hill, I, I believe Hill has one more year. I thought there was one more guy that they kind of slipped that's into it. that. That's it. They have nobody else. Okay. Unless you're thinking of Owen Wright. No. And we just learned that the free agents out there at running back are uh, geriatrics. So. Yeah. When Earlier this offseason, I was not very bullish on Derrick Henry and, and the – workload that I thought he was going to get and then when I statted them out looking at their depth chart I was like okay Derek Henry is going to be the dude all right that'll do it for the AFC winners and losers episode next week we're doing some mailbag we're doing some overreaction episode uh the week after that is dynasty week oh baby and speaking of dynasty there is a new episode out a rookie mock draft so if you want to dig in deeper with the whole crew yeah well almost I mean the whole dynasty yes okay I got you. Uh, That'll do it for today's show. Thank you for joining us. UltimateDraftKit.com. If you want access to the Dynasty Pass right now today, we'll catch you on the next episode. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.